So the question is, why doesn't he grow up? Why does he still behave as a child? How can we help him get rid of these leftovers from childish behavior? <laughs> Those motherfuckers in their pointy shoes are going at it. He kicked me in the face. <laughs> Dude. What's going on? We made it happen. We made it happen. Finally. I, I like that intro, too. That was the <laughs> first time I've seen You've that. You've never seen that? No. I did that at uh, on my own. I, I just learned some like really basic editing techniques, and Chris Comfort did the song for me. Nice. I'm so proud of it. I love this shit. Uh, I love doing this podcast. When did you guys start doing the actual intro to it? Like, how far into the show? Not, not Maybe like four episodes ago. It took a little while trying to figure that out nice like work. chris comfort did like five different versions like he's he's like me he really gets into like all this tech stuff i just love that we can do it now like we have the, all these new potential things to like play with and make you know like people are editing movies and making like l cool content all over youtube i i saw this the other day that was awesome youtube just bought a twenty thousand square foot warehouse in new york city and if you have over 5,000 subscribers, you have free use to the entire studio space. Like they they have cameras, they have professional audio equipment. If you get 5,000 subscribers, you can just use the that's shit. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable. It's awesome. That's a good idea. It's really cool. It's a great way to promote um, better content mm -hmm. for YouTube and I make mean, it like People legitimate. are making a living now uh, for YouTube. Is that not crazy? Yeah. It's awesome. We were, we were just talking about how, like where the fuck did podcasts come from? Like it just kind of popped up and it was like, oh, like I remember the podcast button mm -hmm. on an iPhone or like maybe even an iPod. And I'm like, what is a podcast? Yeah, like, yeah I totally. Remember seeing the it the first like, time you got your, your iPhone, that? it's like, I have no idea. What but if you talk to anybody nowadays, like everybody's listening to podcasts. You know, they're walking around, they're they're meeting people, they're getting information from people that they wouldn't be able to otherwise, you know? Well, it's like the scene in The Matrix where you just plug in and you, you learn a bunch of information really yeah. fast. So that's yeah. what it is. We're not really wasting any time anymore. In Manhattan, we don't waste a second. It's like if you're walking around, if you're in your car, it's like you're not going to think. You're going you're gonna to tune in. Dude, yeah. I love that analogy that you use. Like, it's like the Matrix when they plugged it into the back of their yeah. head and it was like instant. This is like the uh, 28K modem version of that, right? Yeah, it, like, we're, it, it, we're, putting in, <laughs> we're putting it in our ear and we're learning things. Like, it's a very long download. It might take a couple days to download this file. It'll get faster. But right? it goes in, right? And it'll get faster. Totally. Yeah. And, and it, before it was like, all right, you're driving your car. You're not going to get anything done. You just assume that. You're going to stare at the road, maybe right. think a little bit. But now it's like you're wasting time. Yeah. If you're driving or you're walking and you're not listening to a podcast and getting smarter, someone else is. So that uh, kind of sucks. True, right? You know? Well, how do you... So you you see it as much as I do in New York, especially. Like, there's, a, there's still a balance, right? Because you can over overdo the input you can overdo or at least totally. for me yeah. like there are points when i'm like sensory overload and i i like i can tell i'm fried like mm -hmm. my brain is getting too much in you just stop it just, <laughs> you, you just feel that like i think a lot of people get that at the end of the day in new york city you yeah. just you don't want to hear anything you don't want to talk to anyone that's like my train ride home mm -hmm. and that's why a lot of times i hate when there's you know people that i know on the train as much as i want to talk to them at like nine ten o'clock at night, I just want to cut off. That's it. Yeah. Do you do anything else to uh, kind of stop or turn off, or do you do anything regular? Sure. I mean, you know, especially like given my sport, which is uh, bodybuilding. Yeah. And, um, which I want to get to. Totally. I, delve I mean, into that. It's you know, it's all about the mental aspect. It's about uh, recovery. You know, as everyone knows, it's not the yeah. training that really builds the muscle, but it's the recovery. Um, so you want to be able to shut off as quickly as possible. And it's a, it's also a very routine thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be disciplined and you got to be on point with your routines. So it's easy to ask me like, oh, you know, what did you do today? What time did you eat today? Like, right. what do you do on a daily basis? Right. And it's like, I could tell you pretty much what it looks like at nine o'clock on most days on a right. daily basis, you know, so 
um, I'll definitely do meditation. There's um, two two um, you know types of meditation that have been helpful for me. One was just the app uh, Headspace. Mm, yeah, I think that's easy for a lot of people just to start off ten minutes a day. Um, there's actually like you can get emails from uh, this guy Deepak and Oprah together and they give like 20 minute uh meditations da- we just had david uh-huh. ingram on the podcast and, that's exactly uh, what he was talking he about he was telling me about yeah, it because we've, yeah. been, we've been talking about it the last few days and that's supposed to be really effective too is that an it's app good. or do you download that off the no website? you just sign up for it um, cool. it's probably on oprah's website or Very something cool. like that yeah so do you do it in two different periods in the day like a morning and afternoon do you like to do it after you work out do you like to do it after you wake up like what's usually i try to do it in the morning yeah um just to like you know, I think a lot of times, at least for me, I wake up and it's like, all right, let's go. There's thoughts immediately on the mind. So for me, the morning's kind of like the most hectic time. And that's when I want to just take a little bit of a step back. So if I can get 10 minutes in before I leave the house, that's ideal. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes at night, if I'm doing some recovery work, you know, if it's a bath or something like that, then I'll do a little bit longer meditation, maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. What do you think it does for you? Or what, what, why? You know, why does it become part of your routine? You know, uh, I guess, first of all, for people that are into training, you know, they, they start to realize that the not the only type of meditation, you the only type, the only meditation you can do is not just um, plugging in, putting yeah. on headphones and right. listening to someone tell you how to meditate. Right. But a lot of things you start to realize are a walking meditation. You know, anyone who's really gotten into training realizes how much of a meditation that is. You know, you're counting sets, you're counting, you're counting reps, one, two, three, same as you would when you're counting breaths for a meditation. A lot of meditations will have you count up to 10, count your breaths up to 10 and then restart. And it's like, that's what we're doing in the gym. Yeah. It's a shitty vocab. Like the vocab got fucked up when on the word meditation. Um, it's like energy. I don't like it. It's too vague and, or mm-hmm. it's specific. It, it like, it makes you think, okay, if you meditate, what that means is you sit Indian style or, uh, in the Lotus position, mm-hmm. you're upright and your eyes are closed and maybe you have some incense on and, or, and, or some like gongs going or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that's one way, yeah. but like it, it It's not even a way, like what meditation to me is, is really just turning off past future. It's concentration. It's Mm -hmm. focus on focusing into the moment right now. And you can do that a million different ways. You can do that walking down the fucking street. You can do that like in a conversation with me and you right now. You can do that picking up a barbell. You can do that sitting on your living room floor in the lotus position too. Like Sure. So we try to, I mean, we try to box it in. We try to buy it. You know, that's the main thing. It's like people come to us and they want to buy a a training package. And it's like you, you know, you pay for this. You come at the right time every day. You stay for your 60 minutes. You get the results. But we know it doesn't work that way. Yeah. So it's not going to be the same way with meditation either. It's like, you know, just because you sit down and you do your assigned 15 minutes, it doesn't necessarily give you that reward you're looking for. No. We, yeah. know, we know that from training. I mean, we have so many people that come in 60 minutes, a, uh, two time, two, three times a week, and they don't get the same benefit as, you know, the next person. Mm-hmm. And there's just that difference the, of like the what, rewards in the process. Totally. Right. It's not, you don't get it. I was talking to David about this. You you don't get anything out of it. Like it's not something where you get, and just like training too, right? Like you don't get uh, a reward. Like mm-hmm. you think you do. Like yeah. but people that don't train that are about <clears throat> to start training, they totally think there's a reward. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, every, everything else is like that. Right. But like it's as you do it and if you can stick with it you welcome back we are now in the future we just skipped ahead 30 seconds wow that was weird 30 seconds just disappeared um so bodybuilding fucking hurts <laughs> like, sure. that's the thing like you build up so much lactic acid and just just physically painful Mm -hmm. and it's one of those things too where you can almost always you correct me if i'm wrong but a lot of the times you can do one more rep you know you could do like if if somebody was like here's a million dollars sure if you do one more rep yeah you you have to be be a little bit weird because yeah and and maybe if you're training with someone else then you could say oh this person did 10 reps i'm gonna do 11 but it takes kind of the the real weird the real kind of mentally uh different person to say like 
someone out there did 10 reps. I'm going to do 11 reps. You know what I mean? Ooh. So there's no one there. You're just in your own head. You become a and real psycho. You're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're like, all right, you, you assume someone does 10, someone does 12, someone does 15 reps. And then you're like, all right, in my head, you know, I'm going for 20 reps. Well, every time I go for 20 reps, I always do 21. You know, yeah. like who's wow. doing who's doing twenty one? God, but it never ends. What yeah. about twenty two? <laughs> it does never <laughs> you know end. What I mean? like, it totally never ends. You can ends. play that game forever. And yeah. that's why it's it, it, I love watching videos of um oh God, who's the dude from Texas? Branch. Branch, Branch Warren. Warren. God damn. Yeah. It's just watching him, it's just I I, I can't look away. Yeah. <laughs> like he, I could I've spent afternoons just watching Branch Warren videos and being like, This is fucking amazing. Yeah, and I mean that guy's that guy's intense all the time. I mean, oh, yeah. he's uh, he's a big time hunter, you know. So he, do you, you know, Dorian Yates. Yeah. So course. Dorian Yates came out with that video, blood and guts, and uh, Branch bought him a knife with uh, blood and guts engraved on it. Whoa. And he's known for going on, you know, like uh, day long hunting trips, and his favorite thing to hunt is wild boar. Really. You know, so they'll take the dogs out, they'll go track oh, down wow. these boar, and no, you don't do shoot do, a boar. Do they do it with knives? Yeah, you don't shoot a boar. The the dogs kind of, you know, gather around it, and then you walk and you stab it. And a, and a boar is like an ugly animal. It's just the nastiest, <sighs> well, dirtiest animal. they're really fucking shit up, too. Like, there's <laughs> no rules on boar hunting. Like, they've, they've you can shoot 20 of them. Did you ever hear of, uh, uh, you know who Ted Ted Nugent and um, Pigman? Have you heard about the show that they have on the, the Sportsman channel? No, I think no. it's a sport. It's either Sportsman or Outdoor Channel. They have a show called Apocalypse, <laughs> where they're in fucking helicopters with like automatic <laughs> weapons, just <laughs> mowing down <laughs> boars. Dude, they, there was one day they shot like four hundred of them because they're so they're they've infested yeah. the Southwest sure. and they're not a native breed, so they're just destroying crops. They're mm -hmm. they're they're fucking everything up, and there's no natural predators to like balance them out. The only predators are, are people. So the, like these guys <laughs> have taken upon themselves to like eradicate uh, the, the problem as best they can. But yeah. it's, I mean, dude, it's fucked up. They just leave them out there. No, they actually, they pick, pick up, they up. pick them up and they, uh, they donate them to like homeless, uh, yeah, or not mean, homeless. Or like, bacon's like, awesome. Yeah. It's really good. I mean, it's good, good food. Love it. It's good meat. <laughs> I, 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 you, do you hunt? Do, no, you, I mean, do you have any interest? I, I would like to, you know, I've never yeah. really lived in an area that you could I actually just got like uh, half a deer from uh, New Hampshire. Oh, nice. You got, a, got my a friend freezer. That, yeah. Did you buy it or a friend gave it to you? Or? Yeah, buddy was just like, you know, just pay the butcher fee for it. And, oh, that's awesome. Uh, I mean, like 50 pounds of meat. Dude, Alec and I are, we're going hunting for the first time mm. in a few weeks. With, uh, with guns? We're going to West Virginia with guns. Cool. Yeah. We're gonna okay. we're gonna be sitting. Apparently, my brother, his girlfriend, uh, their family is crazy hunters. Like everything in the house is like an animal head. Yeah, like they have like I'm not ready like for that. <laughs> it's like elk legs under the pool table. <laughs> 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 Like everything is like they're clearly hunters. So and this is West Virginia where like deer are way overpopulated and uh I mean everybody hunts down there. But they're gonna stick us up in a treehouse and uh Yeah, I heard that's pretty brutal actually. Like yeah. you're just there the it's rough. maybe twelve hours just sitting in one spot. It's freezing. Quiet. I'd kind of rather be on the hunt, you know, or right. in like a four wheeler or something rather than just sitting there. Yeah, there. I just don't know enough yet to do that sure once you get on the ground man it gets squirrely you know yeah. your scent is hu apparently huge you know like uh knowing where you are up and down wind and like when you're uh when you can when you have to track them like you can see them from fucking far mm -hmm. like a thousand yards away you can't shoot them from that distance yeah. and they're always moving always they don't stop so you have to like out. dude you could be chasing them for days yeah. you know like keeping them in your sights just trying to get close enough. I Fuck, mean, man. I'd be down for the helicopter with experience. All <laughs> with the, I mean, See, that would I don't, be awesome. That, that seems like the hardest part. I feel like uh, what I want is for it to suck and to be hungry and to be tired mm -hmm. and to have this like big payoff. You know what I mean? Like I, I actually think the hardest part will be shooting the animal. I just I, I feel like I'm I'm gonna have a hard time with that. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, if I'm in a state where it's like I'm starving, this mm -hmm. is completely necessary. You know what I mean? You like, probably won't get that far, in, you know, unless you stay out in the woods for like a week or right, something. That right. I mean, that'd be a good experience. But I, I feel like definitely the more it sucks, 
<laughs> like the, the better, more yeah. the more reward which is you know it's kind of true with bodybuilding right like i often think um so many things in life are like what can you withstand like the person that we then that can withstand the most mm-hmm. gets the most reward you know like gets the the most payoff in what they're doing yeah i mean i'll, I'll tell you what it comes down to is really just consistency I mean, the, if I had, you know, say if I have a dollar for every time someone said this to me, but so many people come up to me in the gym and go, hey, I used to look like you when I was younger, oh, you know, shit. and the, the, usually they're like, I'm just kidding. But like so many people say, oh, at one point, you know, I was doing this or I was doing that. And none of them were really successful, but, you know, they had an injury along the way or, you know, some kind of something happened in their life yeah. and they stopped. And really, I, I think the biggest difference between those people who, you know, made it and those who don't are just consistency you know the the guy that i'm going to work with after this he's a pro bodybuilder he had some heart problems later on and ended up leaving but that was was what he said to me too is like you know i i go and i practice posing with him like once a week and uh, i like to ask him questions because he knew a lot of these pros when they were growing up you know since they were like 14 15 years old and that's what he said to me that you know consistency really just day in day out That's every where single get. day yeah you know? it's so hard to commit yourself though <clears throat> you know like i i always find that to be my like i i i'll learn something to a point and then i'll lose my motivation to continue like it's mm-hmm. not and it's not where i like quit like i it's usually not like oh i got to this point and then it just got too hard it's that like I get to a point and I feel like I've achieved what I wanted to in it. And then I get stagnant and then I have to find something else to like move on to. Hmm. Have you ever had that Not, experience I mean, or like is it from the get go, you knew what you wanted to get I and think, you stay focused on that. I mean, I think it's an idea more than it is something you can, uh, you know, really point at directly. Like, I mean, I played football growing up. I, I was like a three sport athlete, yeah. you know, all, all through school. But, you know, at one point I thought it was football, right? And when it switched, you know, from football to bodybuilding, nothing really changed. It was more that I was just like, all right, bodybuilding's the better avenue for this. You know, I have more potential in this sport. Um, I enjoy it more. And uh, it was just a better avenue for that energy. But it could have been anything, Mm -hmm. you know. So it's not bodybuilding really that excites me. Uh, (laughs) Some people grew up and they looked at like the the magazines or the comic books. Right. And they saw these guys and like, man, I want to be like, you know, the Incredible Hulk. Or I want to be like Arnold. Or I want to look like Arnold, you know. Um, You know, I'm never particularly impressed when I look at like the guy's physiques. You know, it's uh, obviously it's it's incredible, but that's not what gets me going. You know, being like I want to look like that. No one wants to look like fucking Kai. Grant. Yeah, that's well, that's, like, that's the other ridiculous. Thing that I look at. I mean, those. I, I mean, if there is someone like that's the person you want to look at and be like, all right, this dude's weird. Like that guy's got a problem. <laughs> well, dude, you can't take that suit off. You know, you get yeah. yourself that big and that like you're. You can't walk through doorways. Sure. And it's not like it's by healthy. clothes. Yeah. It's not like it's tough on your body. Yeah. Your I mean, you, you can't look at anyone who's a um. professional athlete and say, oh, that's a good endeavor for health. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, you're probably better off, honestly, being a bodybuilder than you are a marathon runner, like, from, from what we know. But well, at the same me, yeah. time, like, any endeavor taken to that point point is it's going to be damaging yeah sure and that's what makes it more interesting to me that even in spite of that like you seem like a a a pretty smart young man here sure (laughs) (laughs) what it like it's in it's kind of like people that jump out of airplanes or like uh just do extreme (laughs) extreme sports it's like you seem like a smart guy what the fuck are you doing (laughs) (laughs) maybe i'm not as smart as you think (laughs) so so what like this is where i want to get in your head a little bit and try to figure out like what was it what was it how do you what why bodybuilding what what happened or what developed what is it about it that you love so much? It, it, you know, explain to to the lay people, um, like what are what you love about it. You know, why you're so drawn to it. Well, I, I guess it makes it worth it. Sure. I mean, I guess it started. Uh, like I said, it started with football. You know, I needed to get strong, bigger, uh, stronger, yeah. faster for yeah. uh, for football, and uh, I was training for that and. Um, you know, I, I guess I realized at some point without even knowing it um, that I was doing bodybuilding. 
you know, it's not like I was, I was kind of training for football, but I was eating like a bodybuilder, mm-hmm. you know, I had like the Tupperware and stuff. Sure. And I was kind of still leaning more towards training like a bodybuilder than I was a football player. Yeah. You know, so I do the, the Olympic lifts and I'd still do a lot of plyos and sprints and stuff, but I was kind of leaning more towards like the bodybuilding style. It's of almost like you were good at it before you were even doing it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was really good at it, you know, and and I got a lot, I guess I got a lot more attention doing that than I did playing football. Mm. I mean, I was always like a captain in football and I was good at football, Yeah. but when I lifted in the weight room, like when we built our new weight room, like in high school, there was kind of a glass observing window Uh and like, um, you know, I was probably anywhere from 15 to 18 uh, while I was lifting at that time and people would come up to the window and just like watch you know, because I could do ridiculous things at that age. And it was, you know, even now, like, it's always the same thing. Like, oh, you're this age. Like, oh, I, I assume that's going to stop at some point. But people are like, oh, my God, you're like 16. <laughs> so, like, you squat 600 pounds and you're 16 years old. I'm like, shit, that's going to stop soon. <laughs> like, fuck, getting older sucks. But it was always cool, you know, because it's like, Jesus, this guy's like 16 years old, you know. Like, uh, I was able you to hit a like, lot a, of love for that endeavor. Yeah, kind of, but yeah. it was yeah, but it was a very individual type of thing too. I mean, yeah. I did it when no one was there. Sure, you know, like I was running sprints when you know. I remember, you know, some of my friends were at parties and stuff like that. Like I would still always do that stuff. I mean, throughout high school, I, you know, uh, drank and smoked and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, you just kind of when you spend enough time alone, I guess, especially in that type of endeavor, because no one's gonna go to the same length as you. You know what I mean? Like someone might come train with you a few days a week, but something might happen and then you got to go train at, you know, 10 o'clock at night and no one's going to be with you then. I think that's really the difference is like, you have to know that at the end of the day, you ha- you're going to have to do it by yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many, there's people who can help you and boost you up and stuff, but you have to be willing to spend time alone and and get to know yourself it's also uh really hard for people to put themselves in the state of the long-term goal Mm -hmm. stay focused on long-term goal you ever hear the um uh marshmallow experiments that they did on kids in the 70s this is an Uh, awesome i think they'd leave them in the room with the marshmallow and they'd say like okay if you don't eat that marshmallow you'll get two when i come back yeah they wouldn't say when they were coming back and then they would just videotape these kids like kicking and screaming. Yeah. They're like, I want to eat the marshmallow. And some would eat it and some wouldn't. But what they found was, was really interesting is the kids that could resist and focus on the long-term goal of getting at them the long-term, for them the long-term yeah. goal of getting two marshmallows, they had an average of 200 points higher in their SATs. Hmm. They made more money in, in their careers. They had much more long-term rewards in their lives because they were able to withstand these short-term uh difficulty this short-term struggle and stay fixated on the long-term goal of what they wanted sure. and, I, and i feel like what you're getting at and what your gift has been is uh staying focused on that long-term goal and not just giving into like man this sucks in the short term or sure like, i mean i get the question like almost every day oh what are you what are you training for like when's your next show when's your next show right and it's the same people will ask me all the time and i'm like oh about two three years out right now and like what two three years out because everyone's like oh i'm 12 weeks out for a show i'm training for a show 12 right. weeks out and i'm like you know it takes a long time to develop that kind of physique so making that jump from you know being a teenager and competing you know with guys that are under 200 pounds to all right i'm 511 realistically on stage i gotta be 230 plus <laughs> so i gotta be walking around at 260 <sighs> at least what uh are, have you ever done I guess I mean this is a stupid question, but you've done like full cuts and all that. Mm-hmm. Are, are there any aspects that you are going to have to develop that you haven't like gotten into yet in the sport? I mean, as far as uh, like dieting goes, yeah. I, mean, I guess you've, you've kind of done that, but you haven't really you, not to the degree that you'll have to down the road. Sure. Um, I mean, the thing is, once you put, as you put on more and more muscle, yeah. in some ways it gets easier. Like, it's never easy, of yeah. course, but like, you have a little bit more leeway. You can eat more food. A lot yeah. of people make the mistake of just eating too little. 
Yeah. You know, when you realize what, what, like, what is yeah. the amount of food that you have to eat to like gain muscle? Everybody wants to fucking know this. I'm mm-hmm. going to make this a clip in the video, <laughs> but everybody, I mean, fuck gets, everybody asks me this all the time. Like, what does it really take? How much you got to eat to gain muscle? I think it's pretty standard. Uh, you know, two grams per pound of body weight or, uh, one gram per pound of body weight as far as protein mm-hmm. goes is, is pretty standard across the board, you know? So if I'm 220, I'm doing about 220 grams of protein. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, 1 to 1. 1.3, 1. 1.3 grams per pound of body weight being kind of the upper limit Yeah. as far as like what works well. But it's funny because you look at the research and, you know, there's a, a lot out there that will tell you uh, like about 3.5 grams of leucine, which in a lot of things is anywhere from 30 to 40 grams of protein. Um, and again, it depends on the size of the individual, but that kind of maximizes protein synthesis acutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and the next time, so you meaning can, like, ma- is if you get more than that, is that it's you don't have really- a higher spike, you know, okay. or the spike is like one percent more. Okay, you know, you have, so the you diminishing have 10 grams, returns exactly. kick in. Gotcha. So, um, and, and then you kind of get a pulsatile effect from that. Um, and about four to five hours later, you can consume another you know, 30 to 40 grams. Mm. So, um, and and it also changes whether you're younger or older. They find like young people can actually do pretty well off around 20 grams. They can maximize protein synthesis. Then as you get older, it it falls towards a 40 gram mark. And the more muscle you have, I'm Uh, sure. It might, yeah, it might change. The more you weigh. Your body can start to utilize more of that, right? Potentially. That's another question. But, um, the thing is, when we look at the amount of protein that you need over the day, because if you kind of carry that out and you say, all right, yeah. let's say 30 grams every, you know, even four hours, that you might only eat four times a day. And right. that's, you know, that's like 100, uh, that's 160 grams. Um, but when you look at like, all right, from kind of like a objective standpoint, like what are people taking in to gain the most muscle mass? And it tends to be a little bit higher than that. You know, so there's kind of like this uh, acute protein synthesis reaction, but then there's like, all right, the total amount throughout the day. And there's a lot of people out there who say, oh, you could eat 100 grams of protein in a meal. You know, like there's nothing wrong with that. So I I think we're still kind of figuring that out, you know, what the optimal protein dose is. Most people would say we know what that is like per meal. Mm. But the problem is it's different when you look at when it over scale the whole day. It to the day because yeah. then you can look at it and be like, well, you can process this every four hours. So mm. what's to keep somebody from like every four hours? You know, what about the guy that does that? He wakes up through the night every three, four hours. He has 30 grams of protein. Like, is that guy getting better results? I don't you know, think it's, so. It's just to, because like, because of the hormonal release you're getting. I, I think there's Altering a, your sleep, you mean? Yeah, I think yeah. there's a lot of great things happening when you sleep. Yeah. And to mess with that, it's just probably not worth doesn't it. Like, that, that's the ultimate time for recovery. Doesn't that seem like where that's where all the, the research is right now? And, like, all the, the, the breakthroughs that we're re- hearing about is, like, sleep. Sleep is fucking huge. <laughs> like, I mean, I think the biggest so thing, like, the biggest thing in the field right now, I mean originally like strength conditioning kind of came from football in a lot of ways like most other sports didn't train with weights but it kind of came from football so you had these uh in 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 a lot of ways like bodybuilding mm-hmm. like originally yeah. it, it, originally it came from arnold, bodybuilding arnold and the crew and pumping yeah. iron and like that's where lifting Dude, weights came from even at that point were were pro sports teams even training like, were they even lifting weights at that point when Arnold was doing pumping iron? Not really. I mean, really, football right? was, but most other sports weren't yeah. doing that. So uh, the original kind of introduction of weightlifting came pretty much through bodybuilding. And then from there, uh, you know, some of these teams, like football teams, for example, they caught on to powerlifting. And like, oh, this makes a little bit more sense. Like, we, we don't need to, uh, you know, build as much muscle mass. Sometimes that's where a lineman may be. So but be we want to be really strong. Right. And then, of course, Olympic lifting came along. And be Olympic really lifting was the big thing. Right. You know, and of course, in recent years, we've seen, like, oh, movement quality is the big thing. Because yeah, if you have yeah. all this strength, but you sure. can't transfer the right. strength, then it doesn't matter. I think the biggest thing that you're seeing come along now is, is really brain science. Yeah. I think most of what we're looking at now is neural stuff. Um, and as it relates to all of those things, I think, uh, I mean, obviously we're just scratching the surface, but uh, the top people in the field right now, I think are really looking now, at the do brain. You, do you see a difference between like neuro brain science and um, mental training or 
you know, like the more psychological training, like even though that's that's the, a difference between the mind and the brain when uh, applying the in the realm of of training. Totally. Fitness. I mean, I think the people that are doing the research on the brain mm -hmm. um, aren't necessarily aren't necessarily the same uh, have the same mentality as the people who are. Uh, you know, kind of in in the gym, in the trenches, yeah. so to speak. You know, those are two different people. They always will be. I have a sense that, like, no matter how much you learn about the uh, cause and effect, like, if you go the mechanical approach, even if you're going the mechanical approach of looking at brain synapse, and this causes this, which causes this, and, and we fully understand that, I think we're still going to run into a wall. And that wall is going to be where you're emotional strength your mental strength come into play like we're we're doing a lot of research and learning how things interact with each other but it to me that driving force that thing that really makes the machine work is that mental and emotional strength the psychological strength mm -hmm. um to training which there's like zero research <laughs> like there's nothing yeah. there's no approach there's no systematic approach that anybody's really like not on a large scale selling, you know, you don't read in men's health. Like, uh, this, this book is totally going to change the way you think. And you're going to have a six pack in six weeks, you know, like that's not the sell, yeah. even though I think like, that's where a lot of the answers lie. Yeah. You know? I mean, you can go to any like, uh, you know, garage gym or dungeon gym and that's where you see like the most jacked people. I mean, a, a lot yeah. of people go to these fancy gyms and they expect to look like the people you actually see or, or just a smaller version, maybe of the people you see in the basements training. Yeah. And those people have maybe the least knowledge and in a right. lot of ways that's empowering. Yeah. What's, what's up with that? And how do we close that gap? You know, like how do we bring something that the uh you know those garage gyms have figured out so so well through culture and environment and just mm -hmm. experience how do we how do we bring that into the mainstream you know is it possible nobody's really doing that i mean i i think you do lose a lot um you know kind of the more the more research you read and the more you delve into you know the biomechanics like you say the more you try to learn uh, from an academic standpoint, I think you do lose a little bit. Yeah, you know? yeah. You're almost well, better it, it off. It gives you an out. You know, it's like sure. no longer my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's because, oh, well, this ligament and tendon are not quite aligned properly. Uh -huh. Oh, and it's because of my genes are were built a certain way and my brain synapse fire it doesn't fire the way it's... But it gives us all these outs, yeah. all these reasons why we can't. And then we're like comfortably can sit back and be like, not my fault. Uh -huh. not, yeah, my, totally. not, my, not my fault that I don't have everything I want. Not and, my fault and, that I'm and not And the funny shape. thing is like usually the smartest people um, that you hear talking about that kind of stuff at some point, they found an out, mm. and now they're the ones giving the advice. I know, I love that. That's like, like it's the, usually the people what it is. peddling it, and they aren't in shape. Yeah, you're looking at them, and you're like, I wouldn't trade my body for yours ever. Totally. You so know, at, at some point along the way, like they, you know, they found an out. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't have the genes to do that, or yeah. you know, whatever it is that. Somewhere along the way, they found an excuse, and that's like it's tough because I think it's easy to find yourself in that position. I think we're all in that position and then it's just what you do, how you deal with that position, right? Where we all have adversity. I, I love yeah. the fact like everybody loved, like I, um, what was my latest thing? Oh, I, uh, I like pulled my back last mm -hmm. week and fuck being a trainer. Everybody's going to tell you, Oh, let me tell you how to fix that. Let me, mm -hmm. let me, let, well, let me just lay you down here on the side. Yeah. I'm going to do this. And it's like, dude, no, like, like, my back just needs to heal. Like it pulled. Like I pulled my back. Yeah, sure. There's nothing it you has can do to about heal. that. Really, I <laughs> like, mean, you like you might do some distraction technique. You might get me to release this a little bit right now. But what it needs is just time to like heal. Yeah, you right? need you need the inflammatory process. So even like yeah. even ice, for example, is probably not a great idea. Like you just want to let your it's body do its heal. thing. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a shortcut. 
You yeah, just got to let it. Unless you take like uh, testosterone right. or something like that. It's probably a <laughs> well, it decent just, shortcut. I mean, right. let's think about some like Kobe Bryant. What you, yeah. He tears the like, Achilles tendon and then he was back. Dude, you know, like, how, same about, year. how about that uh, Regenikin though? Do you do you know anything about it? The, I the treatment that these guys are taking, Peyton Manning and, and um, uh, Kobe Bryant? No, I didn't hear about it. Have you, do you know what it is? No. Regenikin? So they take a shit ton of your blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a like t- some stupid amount. Like enough that like you can't do anything for the rest of the day. And they run it through these centrifuges. Mm-hmm. And they heat it up. And they spin it. And they pull out this like yellowy liquid that I guess lives in your blood. And, and it's it, like one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory um, uh, substances there is and they pull out just this yellowy liquid and then they inject it directly into places where you're having like terrible inflammation mm-hmm. right, for one, one some reason or another and it just like it just eliminates it that's awesome it's really cool it's, it's brand new but I mean that's the thing that got they said Peyton Manning wasn't going to play yeah. they're like that guy's done Dude, he was like, it was a couple months. He went to Germany. He had to fly to Germany because that was the only place they were like legally doing it. But Kobe Bryant had it done on his ankles. It's pretty cool, man. It's. It, I, I feel like uh, there's a people could get, especially people's backs. People that get like ruptured discs mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, if you want to avoid surgery, like check that out. Yeah, I mean, a lot of those people are probably gonna go back and do it again. Right. You know. Yeah. They can go back and do the same thing. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see if there's like a Regenikin like pill that you take. One day sure. <laughs> that they I take, mean, yeah. They take that process. I'm sure we can manufacture it at some Why? point. Why, dude? What is it about, um, uh, like any sort of performance enhancing substances? that we're totally cool with as long as they don't make you better at something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if somebody's hurt, like you're Jenikeen, we're mm-hmm. totally cool. Like this person can barely walk. Oh, okay, we're going to like fix them right up. We're going to use all these crazy, we're going to take their own blood. We're going to run them through a centrifuge and pump yeah. it back in. They're going to be good as new. But like the minute that it's like, oh no, like you have a healthy individual that mm-hmm. we're going to, we're going to make them better. Instantly red flags everywhere this is terrible this is bad yeah. like why do we have this invisible cultural barrier to anything that Im- makes you better because um, we're competitive it's so fucking weird we're com- we're competitive that I, that's that's the biggest thing i mean everyone is just so damn competitive well, we're haters is what we are yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's another excuse you know like the one that gets me the most is uh blood doping because mm. it's your own blood <laughs> you're take people don't know what blood doping is they mm-hmm. think like or at least i thought this until like six months ago that like you added something to your blood sometimes i mean if you take epo oh right for example yeah but, but you can do it there's other can, ways you can do right, it right you can do that by just taking your own blood out mm-hmm. of your body putting it in a freezer regenerating that lost blood mm-hmm. and then adding back in your own blood Mm -hmm. and you're going to have way more endurance, way more stamina, way more like your red blood cell count is going to be like way higher. Yeah. You can go live in the mountains for a little while. It works too. People off. (laughs) They get really mad. Even though you're not like, you're just taking your own blood. You know, it's so weird. Yeah. So weird to me. And it's like, we could do, we could potentially do so much, so many cool things. You know, if if it was just accepted, you know, that like, hey, there may be a way to hack our current biology and like turn our 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 old school biology into like a super biology. I mean, I think at the highest levels, it is kind of accepted. Right. You know, it, it, there's the lay person who thinks that, you know, this is all taboo and stuff. Yeah. But at, at the highest levels, everyone's they pushing know, for that right? next. Yeah. Well, it's it's even with prosthetics, right? Like pe- like we're on the cusp mm-hmm. of prosthetics being better than our own limbs. Yeah, pretty close, right? <laughs> oh, it's getting really close. Like that. Uh, who's the guy that? Um, uh, that was it. Oscar P- P- Pistorius. Yeah, was it that guy that killed his wife? That that uh, qualified for the Olympics and mm-hmm. they didn't let him compete, or did they let him compete? Maybe they did. I don't remember. There's, I'm gonna look that up. We have the internet. I think there is a guy who competed in the Olympics uh, with a prosthetic, though. There was a guy in the last yeah. one, right? And they let him do it. Yeah, and there was a lot of controversy over that. Yeah, what do you think of that? You think you think that crosses a, a line? Yeah, I think yeah. it kind of crosses oh, the line. Got, yeah, you've got robot legs. 
<laughs> Come on, that, def- that definitely crosses the line. Pistorius. Olympics. Yeah, I mean, if you just showed up in like a full on, you know, like Iron Man costume, you, like they wouldn't let you run. I don't know. You would think, man. Well, I, that's the thing. It's going to be less than five years before a guy can beat. Um, Who's who's the who's the fast Jamaican Usain guy? Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt. Yeah. Five years. I'm saying it, before <laughs> a guy with fake legs can beat Usain Bolt in a sprint. Oh, that's what it is with fake legs. I bet you we we could do it now. You think so? Yeah, with like robotic legs or something. There's some sort of technology that'll make somebody fast enough to to beat the world's put, fastest put man. Fucking wheels on it. Oh, <laughs> did did you see? Have you seen the the robots that Boston Dynamics? Yeah, yeah. There's a big YouTube video. Dude, on there's it. they have one called the Cheetah. Dude, type, type oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jail, Boston Dynamics Cheetah. Dude, it it moves like forty miles an hour. Yeah, I've seen this. Forty thing. miles, and it's a robot. I mean, they have one on the new uh, Transformers movie. There's like a giant one that looks well, like a you cheetah. Know, I don't get my science from the Transformers <laughs> movies. <laughs> but wait, we have a bigger problem. You watched the new Transformers movie. <laughs> I've seen seen the commercial. The Age of Extinction, <laughs> dude. That movie looks uh, looks terrible. Yeah, pull up, pull up that one. That one on the. Uh... Is that me or you? I think it's me. All right, watch watch this thing, JL. There, this thing, it's a fucking robotic cheetah looking thing it's up to 60 it's going faster on this treadmill 18 19 and now now they're jacking it up 25 26 right okay you can turn it off too so holy fuck okay but that's like that. Even that robot right there is still such in its infancy compared oh, yeah. to like Terminator movies totally. or something. Totally. I mean that that kind of surprises me because yeah, it's fast, but it's still kind of like a joke compared to what we picture the ultimate robot being. But can you imagine something like that ten years ago? Like there was nothing. Like sure. this is so. I always I always talk to you about like uh, the accelerating pace of technology Mm -hmm. it's like 10 years ago like nothing even close to that existed so like if that can happen from like just 10 years ago to this what happens from 10 years from now you know what i mean like how far away are it's exponential so yeah yeah we don't even know like that's when it gets really weird to the point oh you know what i I think it it was on one of these videos i saw that they make legs for the army and what they do is basically it allows soldiers to carry like 10 times more weight. So you still have right. your regular legs and then you put on these robot legs over your legs. And it allows you to ca- carry hundreds of pounds for like It's like an of exoskeleton. Miles. It's right? an exoskeleton. But you can run <sighs> incredibly fast. You can carry hundreds of pounds. Dude, we're fucked. Over long distances. We're fucked as trainers. Our days. <laughs> like they're, they're, people are just going to walk around in super strong suits and they're going to like walk up to Ethan and be like, oh, look at this. What What is this, 600 pounds? Watch this. Yeah. Strap on like <laughs> 2,000 pounds with their exoskeleton suit. Yeah. Pick it up. I mean, the Dude, military would be the first. <laughs> what? We're fucked. I mean, do you think people are still going to work out? Like when when that's possible, right? You get, and it'll, it won't be as bulky and stupid. Like you put on like a spandex suit sure. that just makes you super strong. Well, I mean, people I, still I, think, train. I think there's a lot of... Um, nanotechnology out Mm -hmm. there that's going to be incorporated into our own bodies that'll probably be around at the same time you know so it's not just like you have to put something on you could probably take you you could take something you know i I think we'll be able to enhance uh human physiology you know in do you you see the uh the underbro underwater breathing yeah thing like they're they're like within yeah well just within a couple years they're like you will be able to like sit at the bottom of a pool for like four hours. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, they've done like they've done rat studies with it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Yeah. What was the? You could run a marathon at yeah, like a sprint like at a full sprint. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get weird because you're gonna have these doping agencies being like, it's not allowed. 
But then you'll have 16 year old kids that like yeah they're better can than the beat pros. the the world's best. Nobody's gonna give a shit about the world's best. They're gonna yeah. be like let's watch these. I mean I'm sure, I'm sure like in in our lifetime we'll probably yeah. see training being extinct. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if people you won't weren't give it really. Up, though. You love it. You know, like I love it. Like it, it, totally. It's like. Um, yeah, I mean, I wish I could go back. In a lot of ways, I kind of wish I could go back in time. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I wish that less people will do it. It'll be more, more. Um, it'll be smaller sex. Of, of late, people that later on, still you mean? work out. Yeah, yeah. But like that's really how it was rare. when it started too. It was kind of cool. It was just you know everyone wasn't doing it. it just close knit group of people. Yeah, you know at Gold Gym Venice or something like that. I think like you're that. right. I think it's gonna be all good. I think we'll be able to retain training, but just for a smaller select group of people that are really into it. David Ingram yeah. will still be training. Totally, you know, he'll still be into it. There, there will still the people that care about it will still be into it. So we got like ten more minutes left. Are, is there anything that you are really fascinated with right now? With your that you're really interested in in your own training? I mean, the big thing for me right now, I, I kind of made this jump in the last few years, just from playing rugby and for playing football my whole life. I, I got real banged up, you know. So I went from training uh, like high level pro and semi pro athletes to working in like a physical therapy type of environment. Um, because for a lot of people at that level, uh, what they needed wasn't necessarily to get bigger, stronger, faster, but just to um, continue their careers, you know, mm -hmm. continue playing at a high level. And then, you know, mostly for myself, it was like I had all these injuries. And in order to, um, you know, continue my dream, like what I had to do at the present moment was, re was recover and kind of build a big base. So to put a big house on top of it, you know, so... I, you know, I went on this journey of kind of like fixing myself, you know, the, the, the past couple of years and, you know, now I'm back to you know, full on, full on training. It's better than it's ever been in my entire life. It, it, it's great. Um, so it's blending, blending the two right now for me is, is a pretty interesting journey. I mean, there's a lot of people uh, in the past who have been super intelligent bodybuilders and kind of blended like exercise science uh, with bodybuilding a little bit. There really hasn't been anyone who's um, who's taken strength and conditioning at the highest level and like physical therapy at the highest level as it relates to like neurophysiology and applied that to bodybuilding. Mm. Like those are pretty separate. Um, yeah, it's almost so much as like I can't even imagine doing the same in the same workout. Like that you'd have to have separate days, like my bodybuilding day and then mm -hmm. my like pt day sure so are you, you're actually talking about like merging the two together not even necessarily in the same uh, throughout the the course of a day mm -hmm. yeah like how and, and you got to realize like what's actually giving you bang for your buck yeah you know because you can get caught up doing a lot of like movement quality stuff or you know plyos or olympic lifting or whatever like what's going to give you the most benefit directly towards bodybuilding like it might not seem like it you know, but like we talked about recovery before, um, you know, doing some physical therapy exercises that might help to kind of shut off extensor tone and calm the system, just quickly get into like a parasympathetic state. That's huge. Yeah. Because bodybuilding's like, let's eat, let's digest, um, let's relax. Yeah, people people do, don't understand that like all the good stuff happens when you're resting, yeah, when so you're you, recovering. You have to be able to shut off. You and that's kind of where this PT stuff has come in for me. Like now that I'm healthy yeah. and you know I move well enough, it's not like you have to move great. You just have to move well enough. So that's kind of the trade-off. It's like that's kind of the you know 80-20 of it, so yeah. to speak, is like you just have to move well enough right. to do what you need to do. Right. Like, what is it that you do and kind of just get enough of everything else so you can do more of what you need to do. Which so that's is, where all of this comes yeah. into play. I need to lift more often. I need to lift weights as often as yeah. possible. Yeah. I need to be able to digest food as best as possible. This is, this is all why I, like, have a disdain for, like, the FMS and, like, programs like that. Mm -hmm. It's because, like, they... they it's clearly just trying to get you to buy something mm -hmm. because they're trying, they give you a test that like you don't have to get a fucking perfect on this test just to like work out the way you want to work sure. out. But very few people like, like a yoga instructor, like could barely get a perfect score on the FMS mm -hmm. if, if they could, you know, you don't, what do you, what do you need? Like, like what are the, what are the basic movements that you should be able to do? You think, um, just to train, just to be like your everyday layperson. 
to like, if you were going to give some advice to people, like you should be able to do this, you should be able to do this, you should be able to do this. Generally, you're going to be all right to work out. Sure. I mean, gives, gives I think everyone is, is all right to do something. Yeah. I think it's totally You'll scalable. Everyone can do something. You know, so I, I guess that that's a starting place, yeah. and it depends on what you're doing, uh, what you what you want to do in life. You know what I Let's mean? Say you're just you're somebody that just likes you. You work in business, but I think it's helpful yeah. to think about like what is this person trying to do? Yeah, because you know, you know, for me, like I'm willing to go to further extremes. Like you know, let's take a, Olympic lifting for example. Sure, a lot of people, the risk is probably not worth the reward. Yeah. You know, so we don't do it with them. So you kind of have to, you have to set up this risk reward right. t- type of picture here. Um, you, you know, and then, and then you break it into like, all right, if the person wants to be a runner, what are some things they should be able to do? For example, yeah. like, uh, you know, when I was in physical therapy, you see a lot of runners that can't actually stand on one leg. And it's <laughs> like, you're in a, you're, you're doing a sport that it's a plyometric activity. It's a single leg plyometric activity over thousands and thousands of strides. And they can't actually stand on one leg. So it's like if you can't stand on one leg, like it's probably going to be pretty bad on you. So when, as soon as we were able to get them, you know, good single leg stance, they're typically out of pain. It makes me think of uh, Tom Martinez quote, like, it's not how, uh, it's not how fast you can do it. It's how well you can do it slowly. Mm -hmm. Like take what you want to be able to do, boil it down to its basic function. You should be able to do that super slow inside mm-hmm. and out the basic just show me that you of, can do it right, you know right, you don't right. have to train it just show me that you can stand exactly. on one leg show me that you can touch your toes yeah yeah uh, that sort of thing it's good advice man all right we got you gotta you gotta get in the gym <laughs> it's that time you gotta, you gotta get, <laughs> you'll be in the gym for the next three hours all right man thanks for coming in this has been awesome thanks uh, we'll have to do it again yeah thanks i'd love a lot to too. awesome all right till next time later bitches